And it looks like we have our next winner for the new lunar race. Or I guess the fifth winner. As this picture kind of demonstrates, Japan did actually land on the moon after all. Even though technically maybe not the right side up. And so does it actually count if you land upside down? I think it does. And so yeah, it's official. On January 20 of 2024, Japan became the fifth country to have ever soft landed on the surface of the moon, with their mission known as SLIM, Smart Lander for Investigating the Moon, the lander that had a very specific mission. It wasn't just to land on the moon, it was actually to land in a very precise location on the moon within approximately 100 meters. And because it was actually able to do so very effectively, technically this mission is officially a success. And so anyway, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss some of these new updates and some of the new discoveries from the surface of our beautiful moon, discuss a few more mysteries and a few unanswered questions, and obviously talk about the triumph of Japan and what we know so far about the mission. And let's finish with the Japanese mission first. And so yeah, it did land, it landed possibly upside down or maybe flipped over after the initial attempt to land, but overall the mission was technically a success. And you can read more about this mission, sometimes also referred to as the Moon Sniper, from one of the PDF files in the description. But as stated in this file, the main purpose was to use new technology, the precision landing technology, to land in a relatively small area with often very rocky and very uneven terrain by using vision-based navigation and previously obtained lunar maps in order to make instant decision about where to land. And in this case, they specifically picked a location that was not very easy to land on. There was a slope and they were actually aiming for the slope. Specifically, it was a slope from a crater. And that's because the secondary mission was to try to scan some of the rocks in this crater that would allow us to get some data about the inner layers from underneath the lunar crust. And specifically, the researchers wanted to scan those rocks to try to answer some of the mysteries of water and potential sources of water on the lunar surface. We'll actually discuss some of the separate discoveries about that in a few seconds. This is roughly where this crater is located. And so the landing technology was definitely working fine. But something else happened during the mission and, for some reason, the lander ended up upside down. But it was able to launch two of its landers, with one containing a camera, that then captured the images of the lander upside down. These two small rovers were designed to investigate different types of motion on the surface of the moon, with one of them basically being a hopper and the other one moving its body a little bit in order to sort of wiggle on the surface. That particular design is actually interesting because it was jointly created by several Japanese companies, including the one super famous for a lot of different Japanese transformers. But the battery inside these rovers and also the battery inside the lander was not supposed to last for a very long time. And so these rovers are very likely now finished. Whereas the lander, because it landed upside down, is not getting enough power from the solar panels and so it's unlikely to awaken until the lunar night. And once the night comes, it's quite likely that due to the sudden cold, a lot of electronic components inside the lander are most likely going to be destroyed. But if it does awaken after the lunar night, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. But unfortunately, that secondary mission of studying the rocks inside the crater is unlikely to happen after all. Even if it does awaken, it's still going to be upside down, so it's not going to be able to do anything, mostly because there's no way for it to turn around. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Something that's maybe a little bit mysterious. And something that currently does not have an explanation. These very strange, never before seen rocks on the surface of the moon. Rocks that seem to exhibit an unusual magnetic property that is somewhat difficult to explain. And in this case, this was discovered once again by accident by using the data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and then essentially using a machine learning algorithm to try to discover unusual rocks. And the researchers in this case did find quite a lot something like 130,000. But it wasn't until they analyzed the data in more detail that they started to discover something really strange about these rocks. These were not large, only a few meters across, but they were covered in an unusual layer of dust, with the dust itself also possessing unusual reflective properties. Or basically, as you can see from this image, they were not reflecting light in the same way as everything else. And in this case, these rocks were mostly found in the location around the region known as Reiner Gamma. We'll actually talk about this more in a few seconds, but basically a few of these rocks here had these very, very strange properties. And it's actually believed to be the result of very unusual magnetism. To be more specific, it's actually believed to be a result of dust accumulation due to some kind of magnetism coming from inside the rocks. In general, lunar dust can be easily manipulated through electrostatic forces 
and is actually one of the biggest nuisances on the surface of the moon. Not only does it get stuck to everything because of electromagnetism or because of static, it also starts floating around and even levitating, producing these enormous dust clouds on the surface of the moon as a result of charged particles coming from the sun and from other locations. And so because of this static interaction, anything magnetic on the surface will usually accumulate a lot of this dust in a lot of different ways. And so depending on the magnetic features, but also depending on the structure of the dust itself, various rocks on the moon will generally accumulate different types of dust and look somewhat different from the surface. And so for some reason, in this location near Reiner K crater, very close to the magnetic anomaly known as Reiner Gamma, quite a few of these rocks look very different from anything else on the surface of the moon. And it is believed to be a result of some kind of a magnetic anomaly inside the rocks and a slightly different size and structure of the lunar dust in this region. And so here basically the reflectivity and the properties of the surface seems to be different from anywhere else. But intriguingly, around the same time, another study about this region focused on these very strange features that still have no explanation. These are known as the lunar swirls. They're actually present in many different locations on the moon and will generally have a somewhat similar structure, but sometimes do appear slightly different. But in general, they will always contain these somewhat curly structures containing much darker gaps or darker protrusions within them. And well, it wasn't actually clear exactly what this is or how they formed. But some of them appear to have different elevation. In this case, bright areas seem to be a few meters below the dark areas. And even more interestingly, some of them seem to coincide with magnetic fields on the lunar surface. Some of these magnetic fields are even powerful enough to deflect certain particles coming from the sun, making them deposit in certain regions in a certain way. Or basically, because of this, these swirls are not as affected by various types of solar emissions compared to the regions around them. That by itself already makes it a pretty interesting location for a potential crewed mission. Here, there might be a little bit less radiation because of the magnetic protection. And there is also a connection between the swirls and various lava tubes that seem to be present underneath. So these could be technically ancient volcanic formations. We just have no idea how exactly they formed. But what's clear from the recent studies is that there is definitely a difference in height between the dark and the bright regions, which will hopefully provide evidence in order to explain how this formed. Because these are unique objects not actually seen anywhere else in the solar system, right now nobody knows what's going on here. I mean, there are some ideas, it's just none of them explain everything. But it definitely seems to be a volcanic feature, more so than anything else. But we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos once there are some additional answers. So yeah, subscribe if you want to learn more. Anyway, moving on to the other topic, which is water. Water on the moon. And so first of all, new analysis from various meteorites seem to have discovered additional signs of extra water that might have existed on the moon in the past. Now this is from like 4 billion years ago, so this is not new water. But back then, because of the presence of a mineral known as apatite, it basically suggests that the lunar crust was very likely highly enriched in water compared to what we believed or compared to what it is today. Now in the last 4 billion years, the surface obviously changed and dried out quite a lot, but some of this water is very likely still somewhere out there, possibly not so far from the surface, which means that there might be a way to extract this for any future missions. But previously a lot of hope was on the lunar craters. Basically in the past, some of the researchers suggested that ancient water could actually be hiding inside a lot of craters on the surface. And that's actually mostly because some of these craters never see sunlight, and some of them potentially stayed in the dark for billions of years. Because of this, water could have accumulated here for a very long time and might still be there. But the recent study contradicts this with a very important discovery. It actually discovers that as the moon was orbiting planet Earth, it very likely wobbled quite a bit. And so some of these ancient craters did get exposed to the sun and thus would unlikely store as much water as we hoped. And so even though some of these craters did actually stay in darkness for billions of years, according to this study, there are only very few locations that contain surfaces that would be older than 2 billion years old. And that means that the ice here would not have accumulated to proportions that scientists expected. 
In theory, if these locations were actually permanently dark, we could potentially find meters and meters of ice just laying there for basically billions of years. But the results from this study seem to disagree, suggesting that the ice is very unlikely to be there, or if it is there, it's in much smaller quantities. With all of this basically being the result of a kind of a resonance between Earth and the Moon that would most likely produce tiny variations and tiny wobbles in the lunar spin, thus exposing the entire surface to the Sun at some point. And that's maybe the bad news. These ancient craters might not be hiding any water after all. But if the water is hiding somewhere on the surface, or maybe just a little bit below the surface, there might be ways to extract it somehow. For example, some of the previous propositions involved basically a very large mirror. By essentially reflecting the sunlight and focusing it on certain points on the surface, it might be possible to extract some of the water hidden inside regolith and thus extract it relatively quickly by just using the sun. And on top of this, we also know that lunar regolith seems to be pretty good at, possibly, allowing plants to grow as well. Especially if you add certain bacteria into the regolith, making it even more efficient. And this was recently tested as well. And so as long as we can extract water from the regolith and then use it to grow plants, we already have our first steps in the potential lunar colony, which could be technically built inside one of these lunar volcanic tubes. Something that recently was also investigated as a very safe place to maybe build something where humans can live for a very long time. Mostly because these locations protect us from a lot of radiation, but also create regions with relatively permanent temperature. The temperature inside these tubes does not change very much. Although all of these ideas and the actual development of a potential lunar colony we're going to discuss in a separate video sometimes in the future. There are so many different topics to cover in this case from the last few years and so many new developments. And so if you want to learn more about this, subscribe because this video is coming out pretty soon. On that note, Congratulations, Japan, on becoming the fifth, even though maybe a little bit upside down. And thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who was learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.